Hi everyone, I'm Juan Rafael, a PhD student at the University of Vigo, and in this talk I'm going to talk about a paper that is titled Negative Assortative Mating and Maintenance of Shell Color Polymorphism in Litorina Neritrema Species. Since the classical studies of EV4, color polymorphisms have been a major topic of study for evolutionary biologists. One of the reasons color polymorphisms are interesting to evolutionary biologists is that they constitute a surprising case, because they are widespread in nature and yet theoretical predictions indicate that both selection and genetic drift tend to erode genetic variability. So color polymorphism poses the problem of how evolutionary forces interact in such a way that this genetic variability is not eroded but maintained in populations. An evolutionary mechanism that has been linked to the maintenance of color polymorphism is negative frequency dependent selection, which takes place when the fitness of a genotype increases when its frequency in the population decreases. On the other hand, a particular group in which color polymorphism is pervasive is that of the periwinkles, to which species such as Litorina saxatilis and Litorina fabalis belong to. Litorina is a well-known model in evolutionary biology because it has several characteristics that make it an ideal group to study evolutionary processes. For example, a particularly remarkable feature of Litorina is that it's relatively easy to study and collect mating pairs. They are fairly constant throughout the year and quite conspicuous in its frequency. When studying mating pairs in Litorina, an interesting question is whether there is some kind of negative correlation between the colors of the individuals involved. That is, if the snails tend to mate with individuals of a different color than their own. Another interesting question is whether individuals of a certain color prefer or show a behavioral propensity to mate with individuals of the same or different color. Biologists call the first process negative assortative mating and the second mate choice, and they are related processes. Both theoretical and empirical analysis suggest that negative assortative mating may be caused by mate choice and also that negative assortative mating may be directly related to negative frequency dependent selection. If this is so, if we detect a negative assortative mating pattern in a given species, we are qualified to suggest that negative frequency dependent selection could be maintaining color polymorphism in such a species through a mechanism of mate choice. In fact, this has recently been suggested in a paper by Esteveth and colleagues. These authors found that shell color polymorphism in Litorina fabalis, where four different colors coexist, might be caused by negative frequency dependent selection through a behavioral mechanism of mate choice. And they reached that conclusion by estimating negative assortative mating, among other things. So with this framework, framework in mind, the aim of our study was to find out whether this pattern of mate choice driving negative frequency dependent selection indirectly estimated through negative assortative mating in the wild holds for other Litorina species, particularly Litorina saxatilis and Litorina obtusata, since these two species have a shell color polymorphism similar to that of Litorina fabalis. In addition to that, we wanted to replicate the previous finding by Stebeth and colleagues in three new populations of Litorina fabalis. So to carry out our study, we analyzed these three species in seven new populations from the northwest of Spain, as well as from Russia. And we analyzed four colors for each species, being the only difference between Litorina fabalis and Obtusata on the one hand and Litorina saxatilis on the other, the olive and white morphs. Regarding data collection, individuals were collected following the same method as Stebeth and colleagues. That is, we took mating pairs as well as the surrounding unmated individuals at each location. At the laboratory, individuals were sexed after dissection and then the different colors were classified into two broad categories for statistical analysis following Roland Alvarez and colleagues. These two categories were light, composed by white, yellow and orange morphs, and dark, composed by olive and brown morphs. Regarding statistical analysis, we estimate negative assortative mating using the IPSI index. 
this index provides an estimation of the deviation of observed negative assortative mating pairs from an hypothetical population with random matings. The IPSI index ranges from minus 1 being maximum negative assortative mating to 1 being maximum positive assortative mating and also being 0 complete random mating. And what about the results? We observed that most populations and colors showed a negative assortative mating pattern, or in other words, a negative IPSI value. If we group together all populations of each species according to the dark light classification, we observe indeed that all three species show a clear and statistically significant negative IPSI value. Therefore, our data strongly suggests the existence of a negative assortative mating pattern in these three Littorina species. One interesting exception to this pattern was found, however, in the population of Littorina favalis from the northwest of Spain, where olive individuals showed a positive IPSI value, although not a statistically significant one. In our paper, we argue that this result suggests that Shell color might not be the actual target of selection, but only a genetically correlated trait. So, in sum, two conclusions can be drawn from our paper. First, that negative assortative mating exists in these three Littorina species, suggesting that negative frequency dependent selection and mate choice may play a role in the evolutionary maintenance of shell color polymorphism in Littorina. And second, that Shell color might not be the real target of selection, but only a correlated trait of the real adaptive trait. These conclusions point to our next steps, which should be first, an experimental test of mate choice in the lab to further support the case of mate choice and negative frequency dependent selection as an explanation for shell color polymorphism in Litorina. And second, an analysis of the molecular basis of shell color to test whether it is really genetically linked to another putative adaptive trait. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention and given that I cannot be live today, I strongly encourage you to send me any comments, suggestion or criticism to my email and bye.